Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're taking a look at a client system that I built custom. Now, of course, the G540 system is the standard G540 system I've offered uh, for years. And this one is, of course, available in my eBay store. But what makes this system custom is the motor that I've matched to it. This is a NEMA 34 1600 ounce inch, three and a half amp motor. It's single shaft, 14 millimeter, and this particular motor performs in speed characteristics similar to my three and 600 ounce motors. I'm gonna show that here. Just to confirm all of this, the uh, components I'm using, I'm using my UC400 turnkey installation with, of course, my Physics Anonymous screen set, which I introduced to you guys last week. Um, I wanna just show you how this setup works, and then we'll cover why I'm discussing this, because ultimately there's some mass confusion that NEMA 34 motors cannot be made to be used with the G540. That is completely false. Not only is it false, a motor like this will easily run a Bridgeport mill if it has a motor adapter plate made so you can drop down from a NEMA 42. That'll save you a boatload of money and the, and the um, motor adapters are always much cheaper. So again, it's something you guys need to consider. You wanna look into the largest size motor required for your application that again is not gonna break the bank and there's only certain applications that require this. That being said, this particular installation is being used, believe it or not, to cut down tires. He is using a, a single axis to cut down industrial tires, but he needs it to have enough torque to do it. It's gonna go from a manual process to a production process with a robot, which once again, I matched a ball screw assembly with this to give him the performance he requires. So let's see how this performs. And you can see here, I've already got everything set up. We're gonna jog the motor right now. I have it set at 2,000 inches a minute. You'll see that real quick. We go back. You can see the screen. I'm gonna go back to zero. Now, one thing I want to point out, when you come up here, config, and we go to our motor tuning, you can see that I have the acceleration set at 30, because we don't want a herky-jerky motion when we actually go to uh, start and stop the motor. That being said, you can see here, steps per unit set at 2,000, and of course, velocity in inches a minute is at 2,000. In this case, it's 1,999.8, and it rounds out to 2,000, okay? Now, what makes this impressive is the fact that this motor is a NEMA 34 producing that much torque. Now we know as we accelerate with a stepper, we are not going to get the same amount of torque. They deplete torque as they accelerate. But for rapid motion, for you guys dealing with machines that require rapid motion, this motor is a monster. Because again, once we slow our speed down, we have all of that torque available. And for most systems, you don't even need 1600 ounce inches, which translates to 100 inch pounds of torque. That means that for every inch, there's 100 pounds of torque actually pressed upon it. So you have to think about that when you're dealing with motors. And again, this is pretty amazing to see this kind of speed out of a motor like this. And when compared, actually matched with uh, the ball screw assembly that we went with, we went with a 600 millimeter ball screw, he needs maximum amount of torque to actually push that cutter to cut down his tires. This will definitely do it. And the reason he went with a four axis system instead of a single axis system is because after we had our consultation, I explained to him that a single drive system that has to be custom made costs more than a 540 system. So go this route. It's much, much easier to do. Still an industrial application. One thing I want to point out, I'll just take off my uh, solderless connector here because there's a misconception with these as well that these will not work with 18 gauge wire. And you can see right here, there you go. Nice and neat. We have our grommet installed. There's our resistor. Technically this motor doesn't need a resistor, but I did it anyway. So of course uh, the drive will uh, enter into standby mode. So again, we'll drop that uh, heat going to the motor, which a motor this big is gonna dissipate heat like a monster anyways. But you can see exactly how this was done. Very, very neat. And again, simple to do. We just close up our assembly. Right there, done, plug it in. And again, everything here was assembled using the Oxit, which once again, I carry in my store. A lot of guys ask me about this. This stuff is amazing, guys. I definitely recommend putting it on your contacts. I'm gonna show it to you. 
This stuff goes forever. I've had this bottle now, I think, for six months. And again, you're only using the brush, but it's an amazing contact enhancer and protector. All my client system gets it. Most of you guys all know that if I build a spindle cable, same thing. But again, this motor's actual functionality is truly amazing, and you guys seen that right here. So again, if you have a custom project, before you guys go out and spend money, I highly recommend having consultation. Most of the time, you'll find that your design specs may be over-designed and you'll pay more. So before you spend, again, it's real cheap to ask a question. If it's a basic question, of course, that's free. If I have to go into in depth with engineering like I did with this system, that will definitely cost you. But a general question is free to ask. So again, keep that in mind. I hope that this video has been helpful for those guys out there looking to retrofit larger systems. This motor will easily handle larger type machines. The big thing here is keeping in mind that you may have to adapt the motor plate, which just converts whatever machine you're using to a motor like this. Does your motor actually require this amount of torque? You may find that most machines don't, but I'll tell you right now, for a NEMA 34 mil, this motor is a sweet spot. If you're dealing with large steel applications where we're cutting, you know, seal substrate, inch, inch and a half, you're doing standard milling, this will easily do that. So again, guys, I want to thank you for your support. I hope the video has been helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, of course, leave them below. Um, you can, of course, contact me for consultations. You'll see that in the link below as well. Thank you.